Hello. Welcome to part one of the language of the goddess, life giving. On the first page here, we have an image of the goddess, and in the blurb description, it says, figurine marked with chevrons and zigzags from southwest Anatolia. So it's a very old figure, a very old symbolic representation of the goddess, and all of those markings have specific meanings, which we're going to explore in this next chapter. So let's read the introduction to this life-giving section. Okay, here we are. Life-giving. The amazing repetition of symbolic associations through time in all of Europe on pottery figurines and other cult objects has convinced me that they are more than geometric motifs. They must belong to an alphabet of the metaphysical. That's what we're going to learn, an alphabet of the metaphysical. Further research for the links between these symbols and the image of a deity revealed that the V and the chevron, double or triple V, are the bird goddesses insignia, and that other symbols of this family are associated with her mysterious source of life, the life waters, and with her functions as life giver. The bird goddess as a whole had many functions, and some of her symbols, such as triline, net, triangle, and snake, are therefore transfunctional. They are associated with the life creation with they are associated with life creation and regeneration. So let's focus on that word transfunctional for a moment. So she's talking about three kinds of symbols, right? There are these geometric motifs up here, these V's and double V's, right? And so they're symbols in the, the classical sense that we think of as symbol, as something abstract and somewhat arbitrary, although they're not completely arbitrary, we'll see, that, that have higher meaning. Um, but there's other, other ways of, of, um, of referring that, that are not so, not so distinct. There are iconic ways and indexical ways. Um, so this thing about transfunctional, right, is that the word cat in, in our language, right, has, has a very specific function. It means cat. But these symbols, they're transfunctional. They refer to many things all at once, which actually makes their referential power weaker because they're harder to differentiate. But for some messages, it makes their referential power stronger. And so that's, that's one of the things that I want to look at here is like, in what ways can these symbols, these symbols that we're learning about, in what ways can they refer to things that our language, our English language, is incapable of referring to? And in what ways are they, do they fail at referring to things that our English language is quite good at? What are the relationships between these two languages and how can we, how can we look at them together to try to get a, a stronger idea of, of the metaphysical system that underlies them? All right. So believe that is the end of the introduction. We will move on to chapter one.